Hello fans, the Red Gamer here from Urban Gaming Elite, bringing you the synopsis edit for our Vault of Glass speedrun competition, which occurred between Team PS4 and Team Xbox One. Now, both teams were comprised of members from the gaming community Syndicate Gaming Network, or SGN, which is a wonderful gaming community we are more than proud to be partnering with. Now, this event started off as a friendly competition between both teams to determine which console was truly superior. Their field of battle became the challenging Vault of Glass Raid from Activision and Bungie's Destiny, which was released late in 2014. Now, the rules for the run are quite simple. Both teams are timed from the start of the raid to the point at which the final boss, Atheon, falls. Now, in this raid, no glitches, cheeses, or other tricks are allowed. It has to be a standard run with a standard victory to even the playing field. Now both teams are running the raid on normal and timed appropriately. Of course, a friendly wager is also on the line, with Katie Biscuits, overseer for the SGN community, going up against Regulator, the man streaming on the Xbox side, with the losing side having to profess their undying love to the winning console, record it, and publish it for all to see. We'll make sure to have a link to those videos at the end if you want to see them. Now with that, let's meet the teams. Team PS4 is comprised of their captain Dead Winter, Dollar Bill Jr., Pono Jono, Rishti, Will I Am, and Mets, all standing at level 32. Now, over on Team Xbox One, we have Bloody Gore God, Eloquent, and Regulator, all standing at level 31, and Perfect Prog, Maximum Kangaroo, and Zai, all standing at level 32. Now, both teams have had plenty of time to practice the Vault of Glass run and should have come into the match prepared, ready, and eager to show the power of their team. Footage was captured by Dead Winter on the PS4 side and Regulator on the Xbox One, with the restreaming and recasting done by myself during the actual piece on Team SGN. Now the match does start off with relative ease on both parties, claiming those beacons rapidly and starting the summoning of that center pillar. Now with all runs, there are specific points that must be mastered and can be major time losses if done incorrectly. Here it lies in keeping control of those beacons at all times. Even a single small misstep caused either by the death of a player or a misjudgment of damage can cause that pillar to stop summoning, losing precious time one cannot afford. Now the Xbox One team does take the first casualty with Regulator going down quickly and losing a little bit of time allowing the PS4 team to take an early lead, pulling into that gate into the second section around the 3 minute mark while the Xbox One team fights to catch up and make up for that early death. Landing themselves about 30 seconds behind, Xbox One team makes its way to the aptly named parkour section, requiring perfectly timed jumps, landings, and accuracy to make it through. Now for veteran players such as these, they are jumps of a trivial nature, but can be a downfall when not careful. Just as the Xbox team is approaching the jumping section, PS4 has reached the second section and is off to the races quickly, working on taking down those lanes and protecting that conflux, gaining precious time once again, landing the Xbox team about a full minute behind as we hit that 5 minute mark. Quite another crucial section, the timing here has to be precise as Oracle spawning cannot be sped up, meaning small mistakes here can cause a major setback for either team. Now, most notably is a Team White. A major mistake in taking down the Oracles or even just taking too much damage across the team can cause a full wipe or death of everyone in it, which loses precious time, both from the time it takes to cause the death, the time it takes for the spawn timer to go down, and the respawning into the game can all add up to a quick 30 second loss. Now for the Xbox team, this would be extremely crucial and extremely damaging as they are already working hard to try to make up for that lost time from the early section. As we can see, the PS4 team continues their precision-based onslaught with their well-synchronized attacks and setups while the Xbox team seems to be going for a slightly more unusual strategy. While valid in completing the raid, this strategy to despawn specific enemies ends up losing them even more precious time at a point when they simply cannot afford it, forcing them to slip even further behind, approaching two minutes behind them. Now coming up on the 10 minute mark for both teams, we see the PS4 side is still pulling even further into the lead, despite having suffered a quick death from Winter early in the matchup. Right as Regulator goes down yet again, slowing the Xbox progress, it's still a fight against time where the smallest mistakes can add precious seconds to the clock, which of course add up in the end. Despite the strong effort shown by the Xbox team, PS4 seems to be pulling ahead even more, with the waiting sequence utilized by the Xbox team and that early lead the PS4 team taking making it increasingly difficult for them to catch their competitors. And as kind of expected from the start, the PS4 keeps pulling ahead, taking down even more of the Oracles, pulling their strength, and showing it even further when taking down the Templar with massive amounts of damage, quick precision points, and even stopping that teleporting at the very last second. As we see the PS4 team approaching the final section of Raid, their lead has increased to an almost 5 minute mark, with the Xbox team still trying to take down the Oracles and transitioning into fighting that Templar. 
Now, despite the great efforts shown by the Xbox team, the PS4 does end up emerging victorious, taking down Atheon with the same precision and strength seen throughout the entire matchup. Despite dying at the very end, they were able to technically take down Atheon before the wipe, which does qualify their time, landing in at 32 minutes and 23 seconds. Interesting to note, this time ends up being just a little over a minute of the current world record. Perhaps they can try again and actually hit that mark. Now the Xbox team continued to struggle through the second section as well, coming to a head during the jumping section, with many people dying and failing to get to the edge. Despite dying... Now not willing to be beaten so easily, they still bring their fight to Atheon, taking him down and pushing through despite having known all too well that they were far too behind in time. In the end, the Xbox team finishes in around 45 minutes and gracefully accepts their defeat. Congratulations to the PS4 team for showing the power of their console and precision of their team, but props still go out to both sides for even attempting this competition, and of course for keeping their heads up and spirits true throughout the entire battle. Even once the Xbox team had known they were beaten, they didn't pout, complain, or give issue. On top of that, the PS4 members were constantly giving them encouragement during the stream, showing once again the power of the SGN community. Now, if you're interested in seeing the entire raids from either perspective, you can click on the respective links down below, complete with my original commentary, or check out their individual streams for highlights of the battle from their perspective. Thanks again for checking out our video, and consider becoming part of the SGN community. Boasting one of the best communities around, their motto is simply, come for the gaming, stay for the community. You can check them out at thesgn.com, or follow the link in the description. Now once again, I am the Red Gamer from Urban Gaming Elite. If you haven't already, come check us out at urbangamingelite.com, follow us on Twitter at ugamingelite, or of course find us on Facebook. Other than that, till next time guys, may the light of the traveler guide you.